Hello and welcome to this section about actions before starting a claim. There are certain actions that you have to take before the start of the employment tribunal process. Although the main purpose of this course is to guide how to represent yourself at the employment tribunals and not in relation to other steps which may be required prior to the initiation of this process, there are certain steps that you need to take, you need to be aware of before you submit your claim. Let's start with an example. You started working for your employer called X on 1st of January 2017. On or around 10th of February 2020, you were told that you would be dismissed because of your lack of performance or capability. You believe that your performance was always high. You never had any warnings or your performance was never discussed with. And you are being kicked out because your new manager wants to employ someone else in your place. This may also be because of your gender or your age, in which case it will also be a discriminatory reason because one of the prescribed characteristics, as they call it, they are nine, and gender or age, for example, is one of those. And they are not legally allowed to be the reasons for your dismissal. You are not happy with the way you were treated. While there is nothing to stop you to go to the employment tribunals, it will affect your compensation up to 25% if you unreasonably fail to follow the ACAS code of practice on disciplinary and grievance procedures. This is available free online and you can go to code of practice on disciplinary and grievance procedures ACAS website, the link to which we have provided under this video to find out further. Please note that this code does not apply to dismissals due to redundancy or the non-renewal of fixed term contracts on their expiry. If there is an issue at workplace, what you need to do at the initial stages, try to resolve matters informally and that is also true for the employers. It's guidance for them as well. Try to resolve matters informally. However, if that does not work for any reason or unlikely to work, you should ask for a copy of your employment contract and your employer's grievance procedure. You may prefer to check first at home whether you have a copy of your employment contract and staff handbook which normally contains employer's grievance and disciplinary procedure. But if for any reason you have lost that or misplaced it, do not hesitate to ask your employer for the copy of these documents. Also, take note that you should not take long, as you will find out any delay might be fatal to your employment tribunal claim as there are very strict time limits. You can start internal process, you can submit your grievance, or you can deal with the disciplinary process, but sometimes what happens is there have been situations where employers did not respond in a timely manner, resulting in the claimants being delayed in submitting their claims. If you're out of three months less one day, you cannot take this point at the tribunal that because you were waiting for the response from your employer, you could not submit in your time. Although there are exceptions, for example, where you have been misled by the employer, then that may be the reason and you may be allowed to submit your claim out of your time limit, but there are exceptions rather than the rule. Even if you do not receive a grievance procedure from your employer, write out your grievance in a letter and say this is my grievance. Use the word grievance in a letter or email and send it to your employer. Your employer must follow a full and fair procedure in line with the ACAS code for any disciplinary or grievance matter. The procedure your employer followed will be taken into account if the case reaches employment tribunal. All workers and employees have a statutory right to be accompanied by a companion where the disciplinary meeting could result in, for example, a formal warning being issued, or the taking of some other disciplinary action, for example, dismissal, or the confirmation of a warning or some other disciplinary action, including appeal hearings. There is a range of other rights which are not the subject of this course because we are not looking into substantive or subjective details of different claims. The purpose of this course is to guide you to the employment tribunals process, normally from the time when you submit your claim to the employment tribunals to the final hearing and judgment. In the next section, we will briefly look at appeals and then the step that you must take before you initiate your employment tribunal claim. If you fail to take that step, your claim will not be valid. Let's go on to appeals.